Good afternoon, reef keepers. This is Mike from What Works for Me Aquariums. Thought I'd touch base with you. I know it's been a minute. Um, several months now, I've not had a chance to make a video. Did some home remodeling and had a little uh, fun time during the summer, but here we are again. Uh, starting all over again, or start picking up where we left off, I should say. So, uh, there are some slight differences in the tank. Um, I actually lost a feather duster, which kind of surprised me. Uh, he lost his feathers, grew some more, and then died. So I'm not sure what was going on there. Uh, might be hungry. I might not be able to feed him enough. So as you can see, some things have gone a little bit different here. There's a big new piece of coral dead center in the middle there. It's on the pink branch type coral. Uh, it's doing very well. Everything is doing very well. I'm actually getting growth on the green star polyp up at the top of the tank in the center. It spilled off its disc and it's over onto the rock. I'm real excited about that. And over on the left, the other star polyp, whatever exactly that is, I'm not sure, the different color star polyp, has really gotten big, but it hasn't crawled off the, its, it's uh, uh, frag disks yet. And you can see the little clownfish is doing fantastic. So I do have one problem right dead center in the bottom part of the tank. That tree coral, it, I'm, it might actually be dying. Uh, it, it keeps getting smaller and smaller on a daily basis. It doesn't look well. And I also lost the devil's hand that I had. Not sure why. Everything seems going quite well. Water changes have been kept up. And as you can see, um, <clears throat> the, 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 the algae, the nuisance algae, is pretty much, for the most part, completely gone. And I'll explain that. In fact, I'm thinking about making a separate video uh, uh, on some uh, uh, new products I've been using. Uh, what I found was that it had a great deal of phosphate. One of you guys out there sent me uh, a note or a comment saying that my water parameters were bad, and I couldn't imagine what you were talking about until I realized that my phosphate was 0.25, uh, which is incredibly high for a reef tank. It's supposed to, according to what I understand, it's supposed to be anywhere from zero to about 0 0.05, and currently that's where we're running. So it's actually zero. Now, the way I obtained that particular uh, uh, reading and the way I got, got rid of the phosphate was to use a product called Roa Foss, R O W P H O S, or R O W A P H O S. Uh, you put a little bit of it in a little uh, media bag and put it in your sump, and off you go. And it literally just took out all the uh, all the phosphates. I was really happy with that. And it, as soon as I put it in the tank, and as soon as the phosphates were gone, as one might imagine, so did all the uh, the nuisance algae, the hair algae, which just disappeared. So we're doing okay there. Um, there are new, new, no, aren't any new other new additions to the tank except that branch core in the middle. Uh, and as I, you can see there, I may have to move the Xenia because it's kind of being overshadowed. But one way or the other, we're doing good, or at least I'm very happy with the way things appear. Um, there are a few products that I have tried, as I've already mentioned. Um, Roa Foss is going to be one of them. I bought a Hanna Checker for my phosphates because API goes from 0 to, two point, to uh, point 0.25 and there's nothing in the middle. Uh, so what I'm going to do, so I really don't know was it two point, uh, point 0.25 or not, but it was too high. Um, the uh, hand checker will check it down to absolute zero. So I'm going to do a separate product video in just a minute because there were are some other products I found too as well that uh, um, I've, I've enjoyed using and, and I'm going to do a little, little product video for y'all. So after you see this, make sure you stay tuned that I'll be having another video for you, just on products. So that's my uh, Fluvial 13.5, which is actually about seven gallons worth of water, uh, and it's moving along. If you will compare this to the l past video, the two months ago, you'll see the difference in the coral and how big it's got and how everything's moving along at a very good pace. I'm very happy with the, uh, the results. Okay, so that's that. That's all for the 13.5. I'm going to direct your attention now to my 35-gallon tank, which is having a slight problem. <clears throat> so there's my 35, as you can all see, and it also is really doing kind of well. However, as you might also notice, I do have cyanobacteria growing. Now, I am being told that it's really not difficult to get rid of, and I did blow some of it off the other with a turkey baster. But it's a little heavier than I think I need to worry about. So what I am going to do is I'm going to, I have purchased something called ChemiClean. And we're going to try that. I've also been told to add more um, uh, beneficial bacteria to the tank. And because apparently it's out, there's not enough of the beneficial bacteria 
to outcompete the cytobacteria, although they tell me it's really pretty easy to get rid of once you uh, start uh, aggressively treating it. So I don't think I'm going to worry about it too much. Off to the left in the corner, you can see a pencil urchin. That's a fascinating little creature. I've loved having it in the tank. Um, I don't have anything other new except over to the right near the bottom where the little clownfish is at. Can you see him? Right there. Um, he's taken up with that anemone, which I think is great because the snowflakes wouldn't take up with any anemone. Now all of a sudden he think, seemed to think it's fantastic. Also, there's a cleaner fish there, a uh, cleaner shrimp. The uh, little anemone that's at the bottom of the tank is just not real happy for some reason. I'm having a hard time getting to find a spot. Um, it's a green long tentacle anemone. It was doing great at the pet shop. I put him in here and it's not been very happy for some reason. And you can't really see it. But right where the cinnamon clown is right down below there, there is a green bubble tip anemone, which also is not very happy. Uh, I am told that the two things you need to worry most about with a, an anemone is flow and sometimes too much flow is not good for them, and uh, phosphates. They don't like phosphate, but there aren't any phosphates in this tank because uh, I'm also using the roll of phos here. Uh, and, and they don't care. And it's also light and lighting issue. So I'm going to let them settle in. They haven't been in the tank too terribly long. Let me tell you an experience I had, and we'll conclude the video. Uh, if you, I, I, I've been telling you in the past that I've uh, done a lot with, uh, with Petco locally. Well, I started looking at on on their online site and they have a lot of stuff you can order uh in fact that's uh, uh it, it, that's where the green uh, the uh, bubble tip anemone came from when he gets happy i'm sure he'll be fine and you'll be able to see him better now uh you can order from them and they will send them to you and they're really very fast and they send a really they pack super well you get this great styrofoam box inside a cardboard box and then it's packed with plastic bags and, and uh, uh cooling devices or heating devices depending uh, and they really do a, a, a neat job. Uh, so they're, they're, it's, it's recommended. Uh, you, you could do that. I only had one problem that I could tell you about is that three of the items I ordered died. Okay, so I ordered two pincushion anemones. I'm sorry, urchins, and they did not survive on two days. And then I had a um, uh, blue um, linka starfish. I remember the name. Blue Linka starfish, and he didn't survive at all. He laid on that rock right where the cinnamon clown is right now and just simply fell apart. So I'm not sure whether it was poor quality on the part of Petco, whether it was my inability to properly uh, 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 acclimate them or whatever. I'm told that Linka stars are real difficult. And I'm finding that pincushion urchins aren't real easy to deal with either because the shop where I do my business with got one in and it died to, to, within a few days. And it's huge. The thing was the size of a small plum and it was pink. It was quite attractive. So we'll keep trying. Now, see, I'm having a hard time figuring out what's wrong with the two smaller anemones because the big one looks happy as you can, add, add, you can possibly imagine. It's, it's doing quite well. So anyway, folks, those are my tanks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Kindly hit like and subscribe. Also, if you care to, leave a comment. This is Mike from What Works For Me Aquariums.